This past Monday, some of the Hopkinton Police Department staff was on our Hopkinton Hangout Hour program. Chief Bennett talked about one of the concerns in town, which was traffic. We've, we've conducted several surveys over the years, and most recently in 2019, uh, we interviewed 445 people on a survey as we built our strategic plan. And over 400 times the word traffic came up in their responses. So it, it's certainly a big issue for the community. Um, and in response, we're all really proud of what we built together over the years. And uh, Sergeant McNeil is a traffic coordinator. Um, we built, uh, Lieutenant Porter and I built, uh, um, Chief Lee was part of it towards the end. Um, we built a pretty comprehensive traffic response to both complaints and monitoring. And Sergeant McNeil leads that. Okay. So my question is, I think everybody in town would understand if we said, oh, let's talk about the intersection of 135 and 85. <laughs> <laughs> and I do want to talk about that, but also I'm interested, what other areas of town or types of roads in town, where do you see a lot of concerns coming from? Sure, the bulk of our complaints uh, from the community come from the roads uh, where the commuters are traveling through the town. So uh, Front Street, Front Street, Ash Street, you know, the connector roads mm -hmm. uh, that also bring the, the bigger neighborhoods towards the commuter routes. And okay. so we- Okay, I know, I know on Chestnut Street, it seems like every person from Hollison went down that street twice a day. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> now we have a nice light, a nice new light and turning yes. lights. You know, that's one of the things is engineering can help improve traffic a lot. You know, we right. use engineering, enforcement, and education primarily. Those are really the tools we have to, to for traffic safety. Sergeant McNeil discussed cracking down on speeding. Uh, Hello. Most of the complaints that most of the complaints that we get are uh, speeders, of course. Um, that it's always going to happen. It's very difficult to uh, stop everybody from speeding. Um, but we do have other concerns, such as stop signs, as you said, but um, Main Street, right by Reserve Street, there's a painted box in the road, and a lot of people don't realize what that means. And um, that's that's for that, the school right there, the way the traffic pattern for the school is, is to come out Reserve Street and get onto Main Street, because you can't take a, a left-hand turn on Wood Street out of the parking lot. So, People are uh, just trying in the morning and afternoon are trying to get out of that street onto Main Street, either left or right, and people are blocking that intersection. So one of our uh, we had several complaints from from drivers that it's a diff difficult intersection just by itself. But we worked with the DPW and we had a sign moved, don't block the intersection, um, so it would be a little bit more readily available for drivers that are driving on Main Street to see so they won't block the intersection. But that's just one example of what our program's doing. Um, mm -hmm. They set up this, uh, we call it a speed spy. It's this black box that we can attach to a uh, telephone pole and it records vehicles uh, traveling both directions and it records their speed and the time of day they, they pass by. So we, get, we can get, um, the highest hour like people are speeding so then we can deploy our units let's say between 12 and one o'clock in the afternoon there's 400 cars that pass a certain area and the highest speed recorded it was at six o'clock at night so we can send somebody between 12 and one and then we can send somebody at five or six o'clock at night and then if we leave that black box out for a week or so we can see patterns and sometimes the highest speed in car that drives by, it may just be one car that drives by at the same time. So mm -hmm. it makes our job a little bit easier and in, in enforcing instead of sending an officer down there for, you know, let's say between eight and nine where there is no speeders and there I isn't see. a problem. So that yeah. helps that way. Lieutenant Porter talked about the school resource officer protocols. So about two weeks prior to the start of every school year, we sit down and we meet with our school resource officers to go over the previous year's complaints from either parents or the bus coordinator and so forth, and try to find out if we had any uh, problem bus areas or problem streets. 
leading up to the start of school, um, we start going over a roll call, the various aspects and the locations that we've had problems with in the past. And once the, for at least the first week of school, what we do is we put on extra shifts, which are marked cars or unmarked cars. And they're tasked with either setting up in the school zone to uh, educate the public schools back in session and to slow it down or to follow school buses around town uh, to make sure people are stopping from the buses stop at uh, to pick up children and so forth. Uh, we also make sure that we get uh, through social media, uh, we get our messages out regarding the school openings. And um, we always try to get feedback from uh, the community as to what they need or what they're looking for when school's opening. You can see the full program airing on HCAM and our YouTube page, youtube.com slash HCAMTV.